Imagine you have now some data available for doing an analysis and probably the first step would be to load these data into R and to get a basic understanding of how your data are structured like. And I will give you in this video some tools to have a basic idea um, how your data and the variables in them are related to each other and you can consider this video as the first in a row of talking about descriptive statistics and ex especially explorative statistics. And we will see when we have loaded the data how the data structure within this uh, variable is and how you can table um, variables against each other. So essentially it is about contingency table or cross tables or pivot tables like they are called in the Excel jargon that you're probably more familiar with. Okay, to start off we have to at first load the data and I will use the Münzingen data set that uh, describes the fibula of the burial ground Münzingen for that. So I make a variable, I call that Münzingen and into that I want to load this CSV file here and to do that I use the command read.csv and enter the name of this Fibula data set. And when I do it like that, you realize that I get an error here. And the reason for this error is that it is a continental CSV file. Let me show you how such a CSV file looks. So I, here we go. This is a continental CSV file where all the lines, the, the rows of the data are structured by um, uh, return, new, new line, and the columns are separated by semicolon. And in the original CSV file, this column separator is, was a comma, but this comma is used in continental um, language settings as decimal separator, so such a CSV file doesn't work so well in Europe, and that's why there is this other CSV format where a semicolon is used as column separator. And to use that in R, we have to specify that we want to load a CSV2. And when I do that and look into the data set, I can see now that there is actually our data loaded into R and we have different columns and different rows representing our data. You also might recognize this X column here and this comes from the fact that the first column in our original data set represents the row names of the original data set. And when we import a CSV file just like, like we did, this first column is interpreted as the first column and we have another um, row names here. If we want to recycle our original row names we can specify where our row names are in the CSV file. We do that by adding row names equal to 1 so our row names are stored in the first um, column and when I repeat this command you can now see that these row names are now in their correct place and the rest represents the data. Okay, um, yeah, as I said, we want at first have a look to our data and we start with a command that you can always use to look into data, that's summary. And this works for most of the objects, most of variables in R, irrespectively of what kind of uh, data type is behind that form most data types, probably for all data types, a summary function is defined. So if I put our Münzingen data set in here, into the summary, I can see that I get some basic um, basic statistics for our different uh, columns here, giving us minimum first quantile, median, mean, third quantile and maximum value in the case that we have numerical variables and in the case that we have a um, 
nominal variables, so factor variables or strings, we get a count here, kind of a table. And that's also what we will use later on, a more sophisticated way to table um, instances of, of, uh, of data. But we can also look what type our Münzingen data set is. Oops, sorry. So here it gives us back that's a list, and that's really the basic type that's behind a data frame, because that's what Münzingen, the Münzingen uh, variable actually is from another point of view. So when I say class of Münzingen, I get back data frame, which in turn is in a basic sense a list in R. So when I use type of, for example, to one of the columns of Münzingen, I get back that the grave column, which is this one, consists of integer variables, while the class of that column is in this sense also an integer. So type of gives you the basic type and class gives you um, a derived class, derived type of the data set. I will erase that here now. Another way to look on into your loaded data is the str command, which gives you the structure of the data set. And here it's even more informative. We can see that we have a data frame of 17 ob observations with 17 variables, columns, and then a basic list of what the different columns consists of. And in the case of the Fibula scheme, we can see that we have a factor variable uh, with three levels and here the internal storage of these three levels. So B is, I think, is stored as a two. And so we can see here that we have four cases with uh, um, Fibula scheme Latin B and so on and so forth. So with this, you can already have a good idea how your um, data is structured and it might be a bit of a repetition from earlier videos but it's really worth to know these uh, tools to get an idea how uh, information is stored into different variables it becomes important for example if you have more elaborated uh, derived classes objects of, of elaborated classes to work with when you need to have an idea where the data that you want to work with is actually stored within the variable. But now let's come to table things. And we can start off by table, tab make a table from our Münzingen, um, let's say from the Fibula scheme. And I use this speaking command table for that. And the result is what we already have seen before in the summary. We can see that we have, uh, when we make a table of that, four times fibula scheme A, 11 times fibula scheme B, and two times fibula scheme C in our data set. And I can now also, so this is just counting stuff, and now it becomes probably more interesting if we for example, table the fibula scheme against the number of coils of the fibulas. So we have coils. And now I can already investigate the data that I have from a more content-wise perspective. So I can see that um, fibula scheme Latin A has a more smaller a number of coils here, while in Shibula B we have more coils at the individual um, fibulas, and in C we have only few cases, but this indicates also that we have rather more than less coils there. And with that you can already start answering scientific questions or explore the relationship of different um, data there. Let me introduce to you another function that is called ftable. And if I use it like that, it essentially gives you the same result. But the thing about ftable is, and we can look that up here, it produces on the one hand flat contingency table, that's fine. But on the other hand, it also um, can look the help 
up later on. It also understands the formula notation that's used widely in R. And this formula con notation consists of that you giving the data that you want to work with and specifying the relationship independent from the data. So let me say I want to table the data Münzingen. I want to see the relationship of fibula scheme in respect to or dependent on the number of coils. And this is what the tilde here is saying. And you will see this kind of notation later on more often because it, yeah, it describes the relationship and it's not so much data cent centered but more um, in analytical centered. When I do that, I get the same here. Um, now it's turned around. If I also turn around the variables here, we get back the um, original table that we had here. So we can see again the calls in relation to the fibula schemes. Um, okay, yeah. What you can also do with this f table command is to make more elaborated uh, tables. For example, let's say we want to um, we want to table this also in relation to the grave. So I can add the grave column here, the grave variable, and the fibula scheme, and I combine them with a plus sign. When I do that, I have a multi-dimensional table, so to say. So we have still the coils here, and then the grave, and within this grave, the fibula schemes are listed. So with that, you can make multi-dimensional uh, pivot tables or contingency tables, and have a better control about what is tabled against what. And I can imagine that you will find some use cases for that. Okay, now. Having introduced that, let's switch to the original table command and work with a table more specifically. So we use this table of fibula schemes against calls, and I will put that into a variable that I call my table. And if I throw the summary command onto that, so now I can see that this gives a summary of this table. I can also use class my table. And you can see that it has now a different class. It's now of class table. And this results in the fact that the summary function gives you a different uh, result, different um, information spec as if we would just take a summary uh, make a summary of our original data. And this time the summary just gives you, we have 17 cases in the table, we have two factors, which is the fibula scheme and the calls, and there is also added a test of independence, a she-square test, which we will talk about in a later episode of that. Um, you can also use this table now directly to make a plot. Uh, bar plot, for example, my table, and also we will talk about that in more detail in another episode, but you can see now here we get the number of calls which are represented in the, let me show you that table, so the number of calls which are represented in the columns, separating the individual columns also here in the bar plot, and the different levels within these columns, so the different rows are represented by different colors here. Now with that, also beside the pure table, you get already a good overview about the data distribution in respect to these two factors here. Um, when you want to do a bit more with your table, it might often be interesting to get also the total sum of the objects here in respect to the columns or in respect to the rows. For example, how many uh, objects of type A we have in total. 
and we could all we could always do tables uh, just re in respect to the individual um, variables that we used like we did before here in the most basic case of table up here but if we want to have them at the same time uh, displayed from my table we can use the command add margin on my table oops I misspelled at margins sorry and now you can see we have the same table but now an additional column and an additional row giving you the total sum of that and we can also use the command margin table oops sorry and this calculates the same numbers like here if I just put it in like that it gives you this margin so the total sum of that but I can also specify that I want to have the margin from the rows remember rows are all at the at first there are always rows and at second there are always columns in R so if I specify one here or make that more speaking by saying margin should equal to one which is the same um, I get this table giving me the row sums and if I say margin should be two I get the column sums here and I could also store that into variables let's say my table sum should be this my row sums should be that and my call sums should be that and now I can produce um, tables in respect to the proportion of the objects yeah so let's say I have my original my table and I divide that by the total sum so this is this then I get the individual cells and the total table now will sum up to one so in every cell there's just a percentage of how many cases fall into the specific category so we have 5% of fibulas in our data set that are of fibula scheme A and have free coils. We could also bar plot on that. And you can now see that the y axis has changed to percentages. So, and if we want that specific row wise or column wise, we can use another function that is called prop table. And if I throw in my table here, it gives us exactly the same result. But now I can also specify on what margin this prop table should relate on. So if I use the one here for row wise, you can see that now all the rows are summing up to one. And if I do the same column wise with margin two, now all the columns sum up to one and I can use that again to make a bar plot and now you can see that all the columns sum up to one as we had here in the table and with that you can compare percentages of or ratios within individual cases here to each other irrespectively of uh, the absolute numbers there. Um, we will see that again in when we talk about bar plots probably the same example here but yeah I think it also fitted in here and um, it's just in addition to the original idea that we with this prop table you can have a numerical representation of the structure of your data you can now see for example that within uh, f uh, the situation with four calls 30%, 40% fall into Latin scheme A, 40% also in B, and 15%, 14% in fibula scheme C. Okay, that's all for now.
and in the next episode we will talk about more about graphical display and not so much any longer about the tables. <laughs>